Chapter 4. Meet the Parents. My mother was an attractive and highly intelligent woman who was bursting with such exuberant energy that she looked brighter than day. She had a smooth paraffin complexion with an elegant swan-like neck. Her deep chestnut hair brought out her intense roguish brown eyes. Mom anxiously sought after the world of unconditional love and peace of mind, but both eluded her. She existed for the outdoors and caressed nature like a lover. She was a proficient camper and a darn good angler, too. Her favorite time of year was fall. Not only did it symbolize change, but also vibrantly painted the world in bright canary yellows and deep pumpkin oranges. The Rockies were her dream, as thousands of aspen trees cascade down the Rocky Mountains, their expansive breath transforming the mountains into a golden sea. It was quiet and peaceful, unlike her life. I loved the times when Mom was content, though it was too seldom. I longed for her to be happy more often. She was a prisoner of her underlying pathology and variegated brain chemistry, grappling in a lifelong melee referred to as bipolar manic depression. Her menacing disease circled her brain like a ravenous shark until it viciously attacked when she was 19. Her coquettish behavior was detected a couple of years after she became an immature mother when she experienced the first of many breakdowns. The stunning truth was that, throughout the rest of her life, it was essential she take consistent dosages of antidepressants in order to function normally. Mom had an imbalance of neurotransmitters in her brain, and this condition often exhibited itself through her severely unstable moods. She alternated between mania, highs, and depressions, lows, meaning she could go from feeling delightfully joyful or even overconfident to being highly irritable and expressing over-the-top behavior. I denote this dual personality as the real mom and the other mom. At any moment, the other mom could take over and start screaming and pulling your hair. She could be a Machiavellian when she was manic, sometimes experiencing feelings of grandiosity without compunction, and other times plunging into an inconsolable depression. Mom usually remained inaccessible, locked in her own bedroom, or slumped over a green recliner, intoxicated and making no sense due to slurred speech. This lethal jumble of erratic emotions meant self-loathing. Mom was always terribly sad, and I don't think she ever forgot her terrible pain. Not once. Mom had a lengthy list of criminal charges. With at least five aliases, I don't believe anyone knows how much harm she really caused. She was the perfect master of disguise in society's herds. She could even fool herself. In this way, she fit many of the stereotypes of bipolar disorder. The other mom caused complicated familial drama and defiled friendships, grifting from one affiliation to another. Sometimes she believed that everyone was potentially harmful, living in an almost regular state of paranoia. In due course, as she was falling apart, her friends began to take notice of her combative, manipulative character. Mom was haunted daily by the darkness that so often overcame her. The same suicidal blackness she knew had killed other members of our family nipped at her heels daily. Suicide runs in our family. Growing up, we never really knew which mom we would be confronted with on any given day. Life was a train wreck after train wreck with the other mom. She was married at least seven times that I unmistakably remember, although I'm sure there are more. These marriages involved several seedy characters, including a rapist and a bank robber.